evaluate the line integral by evaluating the surface line integral of Stokes' theorem with the appropriate choice of S, our surface. We want to assume that C has a counterclockwise orientation when viewed from above, and will spin counterclockwise if we're viewing it from below. So, we are given a vector field defined by the components negative 2y minus zx, and we have our oriented curve C is the circle x squared plus y squared plus equals, z equals 28 in the xy plane, or where z is equal to 0. So, what do we want to do here? Well, we want to compute the double integral of Stokes' theorem. So that's the double integral over S, our surface, of the curl of the vector field dotted with the normal vector integrated with respect to our surface area. So that is the goal. So keeping this in mind, let's start by sketching this region. So we have the z-axis, we have our x-axis, and we have the y-axis. And we'll label these. Again, if you have graphing paper, it's always easiest to use. Otherwise, just be sure to label everything. So keeping in mind here, C is a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 28, in the xy plane. So here is our curve C, oriented in the counterclockwise direction. And we're thinking about the surface created by this boundary region in space. So here is our surface. Now, how are we going to define a surface in space that's defined by a curve in the xy plane, a circle in the xy plane? Well, we would say here that our surface S in R3 is the disk. So our surface is the disk defined as x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 28. So this disk has a radius of the square root of 28. So here is our surface, and we want to think, well, what are the bounds of this surface? So let's think about this region in the plane. So we have the x and y axes. Oops. So here's our y-axis and the x-axis, and we know that we have a circle here with a radius of the square root of 28 and our region within this circle. So how do we define the bounds? Well, we could, in theory, use Cartesian coordinates, but that's kind of messy. So instead, let's use polar coordinates. We have a perfect polar region here. So we can say that R and R2 is the set of all ordered pairs R theta such that the radius is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to the square root of 28, and theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So we have the surface and the bounds of our surface. And looking up here at Stokes' theorem, the surface integral for Stokes' theorem we realize we need a normal vector to this surface. So how are we going to find a normal vector? We don't have any sort of parametric description for this surface. So in order to define this normal vector, we need to apply the right hand rule. So take your right hand, wiggle those fingers, and looking at this curve C, we notice it has a positive orientation, an orientation in the counterclockwise direction. So taking the fingers of your right hand, I want you to wrap them around the surface. What direction is your thumb pointing? Your thumb is pointing up in the positive z direction. So how, what's going to be the easiest normal vector to use here? Oh, I gave it away. We're gonna use a unit vector in the z direction. So we can say that since C is oriented in the counterclockwise direction. And by the right-hand rule, 
we can see that the normal vector points in the positive z direction. And the easiest normal vector to use in this case is going to be the unit vector, k hat, with the components 0, 0, 1. So if we, again, if we come back up to our sketch here, we are using the normal vector that's defined as the unit vector, k hat. So again, looking back up at Stokes' theorem, the only thing left to do is compute the curl. So we need a little more room. So we need to compute the curl of the vector field which we know, of course, is defined as the cross product of the del operator and the vector field. So we have our determinant of the three by three matrix. First row is the unit vectors. Second row are the components of the del operator. And our third row is our vector field. So it's going to be minus two y minus z x. All right, so now let's allow ourselves plenty of room. So by the cross product, we are left with zero minus a minus one i hat minus, we then have one minus zero j hat plus zero minus a minus two k hat. And so therefore the curl of the vector field is defined by the components i hat minus j hat plus 2 k hat, or we can think of this in the component form 1, negative 1, 2. All right, and we have everything we need. We have the bounds, those polar bounds, we have our normal vector, and we have the curl. So we're ready to evaluate the surface integral for Stokes' theorem. So here we go. Again, the surface integral of Stokes' theorem is the double integral over the surface of the dot product of the curl of the vector field with the normal vector integrated with respect to the surface. So again, we have our polar bounds. We have 0 to 2 pi for the bounds for theta. We have 0 to the square root of 28 for the bounds of the radius. We just computed the curl of the vector field to be 1, negative 1, 2. We found, or we're using the normal vector defined by the unit vector in the z direction. And then because we're using polar bounds, don't forget your differential will be r, dr, d theta. So here we go. So computing that dot product, this will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to the square root of 28, and by the dot product, we have 0 plus 0 plus 2 r dr d theta. And so this simplifies to the integral from 0 to 2 pi. The inner integral is 0 to the square root of 28. Then we have 2 r dr d theta. So we will evaluate our inner integral first with respect to the radius. So leaving those outer bounds alone. Integrating with respect to the radius, the twos will cancel, leaving us with r squared from 0 to the square root of 28, d theta. And evaluating, so we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 28 squared. So the square and the square root cancel each other out to 28 minus 0 d theta. And so integrating with respect to theta, we're left with 28 theta from 0 to 2 pi for a beautiful final answer of 56 pi. And so there you have it.